Hi. Boys of Silence is a Korean drama with hint of black comedy. The story evolves around this uh, temporary family formed between Tae-in, a 25 years old uh, mute man working for gangsters, and Cho-hee, 11 year old uh, little girl who's just been kidnapped. Tae-in is ordered to take care of her in his isolated countryside home until the ransom arrives. So why kidnapping? <laughs> When I was seven, I was almost kidnapped. Um, I remember uh, this uh, strange man grabbing my hand, trying to walk off, and I was terrified, and I managed to run away, but the thing that remained in me is that the fact that the hand holding mine felt so warm and it was so human. It was not a hand of a monster. It was a human, it was friendly. And I started to wonder what made this man to do such a thing. So this is embodiment of uh, the idea that our character might not be the monster, ju not just the monster. So this is a character Tain that we shot in Korea. So that's actor that I want to work with, and uh, you've seen some of the real location we'll be filming in Korea. Um, so Tain is a, uh, a guy who's earning money by doing um, cleaning jobs uh, for, cr for the crime scene and disposing dead bodies for the gangsters. But he has a heavy speech impediment, so he cannot speak, so he decides not to speak, so everybody thinks that he's a mute but he wants to be the man that Korean demands, the macho. Um, so because he's only seen the gangsters, he wants to be like them. He dressed like them and he acts like them, but in fact, he doesn't fit in that criminal mind of a gangster. He lives in the countryside um, very poorly with his uh, six-year-old uh, sister. When Cho Hee, the kidnapper, is delivered to his place, she's surprised that he's living very poorly. Um, and having her there, it's a burden for him. For example, he has to take her to her working place where he's busy cleaning blood, uh, washing dead bodies and burying them. There's always a little girl following her. Um, or at home, um, because it's a very poor condition, um, there's only outside door, um, outdoor bathroom, and she's scared of darkness, so whenever she needs to go to pee, at night, he has to come out with her, standing out just outside the door, clapping for her so that she knows that she's not alone. But in fact, she's not just a burden in this house because like many other Korean girls, we are raised to be useful in the house so that we can raise our value compared to boys. Um, so instinctively, she knows how to act in this house. So she plays the role of a mother, a woman in the house. She cleans the, this dirt, like a mess in this house, takes care of the little sister. Um, Tain never had this warmth or um, um, this respect from other people. So she's, he slowly opens up to this girl. And these three of them uh, slowly forming this peculiar family. But this delusional peace doesn't last long because uh, his colleague, who's supposed to pick up the ransom, um, fails to do so. So now Tain is uh, ordered to take Chohi to um, traf human traffickers 
And of course, now he cares about her so much, he hesitate and finally decide not to, uh, not to go follow the rule of the gangsters and return her home. And I think this is his way of becoming a real man. Um, even though we are uh, man dealing with a very heavy topic of uh, kidnapping, I don't want this film to be just miserable and dark. I want to use the light tone um, to push the irony and for the same reason, I want to approach with a very realistic camera, like handheld movement uh, with a available light. Um, but the uh, uh, color scheme shouldn't impose the heaviness of the setup. Thank you. <laughs> um, if you haven't guessed already, um, I'm the producer. I'm the one that's from the UK via Nigeria. Um, I've been working with EJ for three years now, and um, uh, it was very natural for this to be her first project, first feature project. Um, she just knows the world and the characters so well. Um, but there's two things you should know about her filmmaking style. Um, although she'll have a really interesting construct, the, the bow on the present, if you unwrap it, there'll be layers of social issues that she shines a light on. And in this one, it's about gender inequality, the roles of men, the roles of women, and the expectations that people have on them in society and at home. In terms of her humor, uh, it's very odd because of, um, in the darkest corner, she'll find some light in there. And um, she'll always say, oh, it's just a Korean way, but I've just realized you're just, you're just gifted. <laughs> That's how you do it. Um, uh, with this project, we have our location, we have our lead actor, we have our partners in Korea. Um, this film will be rich, it will be layered, it will be humorous, it will be dark. But um, as producers, we always push our team really hard, our directors really hard. And when EJ was out in Korea finding locations for this and working with the actor, um, at first I said, just get some stills. And I was like, actually, can you get some footage as well? I want to show everybody that you can transform this guy that doesn't speak and um, make him go from this downtrodden character into this cutout, you know, gangster figure. And uh, she brought back back, and she worked on that by herself with a camera and the actor, and that's it. No lights, no team, nobody. And I want to spend 90 minutes with that guy. That's it. Thank you.